Okay, today we are going to talk about an additional concept called truth tables. And keep in mind that these additional concepts are uh, projects or assignments that you can only do if you have all of your other homework completely finished, all of your book work assignments already have 100s for the chapter. All right, but this one you're going to get uh, basically a handout from me uh, as an additional assignment uh, dealing with these truth tables. So let's talk about a couple things. So first off, we need to look at these things called operators or connectors. Okay, and there's some symbols that we're going to be dealing with. So first one we're already familiar with. We've seen this. All right, this little kind of squiggly looking thing means not. Okay, Some new ones though. This kind of looks like an A without the little cross means and. Turn that thing upside down and it means or. Now, i got to talk about the word or real quick here. Generally, in uh, regular English language, there's actually two different types of or. There's what's called the inclusive or, and there's what's called the exclusive or. The one we're dealing with right here means inclusive or. All right? Inclusive or is something like this. Basically means you can choose one or the other or both. All right? So for example, um, someone comes up to you maybe at the end of a dinner and says, what do you want for dessert? Do you want ice cream or do you want cookies? I'll take both. Okay, or you could just do one, all right? But it's okay to pick both, all right? The exclusive or is you can pick one or the other, but not both, all right? So maybe, for example, you have a, a field trip coming up and you need to pay, you know, for that field trip, or you want to buy a yearbook and you need to pay for the yearbook. And I might say something like, you can, you know, bring the money to your homeroom teacher or to the front desk. Well, you don't need to do both, and actually, you, it would be really dumb to do both because then you'd be paying twice so that's an exclusive or do one or the other but don't do both okay this symbol that we're dealing with is the inclusive or there is a way to do exclusive or we're not going to do that because most of the time when we do truth tables the more common one is the inclusive or but i do want you to understand that there is another type of or called the exclusive or all right. We're already familiar with this symbol. This is our if then. We did that when we did if p then q and things like that. And this one is our if and only if. You notice, remember, if and only if is two different conditionals, so kind of a forward version and the converse, kind of the backwards version. So you can see the arrows point in both ways, okay, saying it goes both directions. All right. It's two different conditional statements. All right, so those are the symbols you need to be familiar with. Now for the truth table themselves, let's take a look at one. I'm just doing a real simple one. So what we'll do is we'll give you a P and a Q. We could do P, Q, and R. I'm gonna do one of those later on. All right, and then we give you some kind of thing to solve. All right, now there's four different blanks here. Okay, the reason for that is there are four different combinations of true and false for P and Q. And so what we do is we fill them in easiest way to do is just kind of do it consistently all the time. And most of the time what we do is we say, okay, I could do true and true. All right, and then I could do true and false. And then I could do false and true. And then my other option is false and false. Okay, so in other words, I could have different truth values for each of P and Q, and this is all the different possible combinations of them. Now this, remember, our symbol here means and, so this is saying P and Q, all right? So if I have a true statement and another true statement, then this combined statement is a true statement. If I have a true statement and a false statement, then the combined statement would be what? Hopefully you think it would be false, all right? If you aren't sure about that, try doing that with your parents sometimes. So your parents say, you know, you went out with some friends, and when you get home, they say, well, what did you do? Well, I went to the movies, and you leave the other thing out, you know. Um, you don't tell them anything, or you tell them a little bit of a, a white lie, which really isn't a white lie. It's, it's, a, it's a lie, all right? If you tell them a true statement, like I went to the movies, well, who did you go with? Well, I went with, you know, um, Tom and Frank, and you kind of leave out the fact that you went with your girlfriend, all right, so you lie about that. Well, then your combined statement is a lie. Okay, so a true statement and a false statement combined together are a lie, a false statement. Same thing here, it doesn't matter the order, so this would also be false. And then two false statements together, well, that doesn't make it true at all. That's just very, very false. Okay, so that's what a truth table would look like for an and. 
All right, now let's look at what a truth table would look like for an or. Okay, so we got this other symbol. Remember, that means or. Remember, this is the inclusive or, one or the other. Okay, well, a true statement and another true statement with an or, well, it doesn't really matter. You can pick either one. So this is going to be true. Okay, and you see I have this already filled in. So if you need to pause to get that filled in, make sure you do so. All right, a true statement or a false statement. Well, with the or, it's just one or the other. We don't really care. It could be both. Both could be true here. All right, but one or the other in this case makes it true. Same thing here, one or the other makes it true. And then when we have false or false, well, nothing's making it true in that case. This is a false statement. All right, so that's your or. All right, next we're going to do the if then. All right, so let's think about something like uh, one we've used in class. If I get an A, then I'll get $10. So you got your A, that's true. You also got your $10. Well, then the whole statement is a true statement. You got your A, and you did not get your $10. So if your parents make this deal with you, if you get an A, then you'll get $10, and you get your A, and they don't give you your $10, then yes, we would say their original statement was false. They, they did not fulfill their end of the deal, so they made a false statement. Okay. You could accuse your parents of, of lying to you in that case. Now, hopefully that never happens, obviously. All right? But if something like this were to happen, that's a false statement. Okay, This right here. All right, now, what happens if you don't get your A and your parents do give you the money? Does that mean their original statement was false? No. It might mean they gave you the money for some other reason. All right? If you get an A, you'll get $10. You didn't get your A. Okay, It was false. You still got your $10 might just mean your parents are really nice. We don't, we don't really know what's going on. So your original statement is still a true statement. Okay, they haven't lied to you. All right? If you don't get your A and they don't give you the $10, well, then they still didn't lie to you. Their original statement is still a true statement. Okay? So that's what an if-then would look like. All right, now we're going to go to a little longer one, a little bigger one. Okay? So let me zoom out so I can fit the whole thing in here. Okay? Now, in the long run, I want you to memorize how a biconditional works, but I want to show you why a biconditional works. Okay, keep in mind that a biconditional means we're doing two different conditional statements. So we're going to do if P then Q. We're also going to do if Q then P. And then I'm going to show you what happens here in just a second. So if P then Q, well, we already did that one, okay? True leading to true is true. True leading to false is false. And anytime it starts with a false, the statement is still true because we don't care what happens at the end. If you didn't fulfill your end of the bargain, get your A, then it doesn't matter what your parents do. All right, now, if Q then P, all we do is reverse the order. So true leading to true, we're working this direction now. That's still true. Anytime it starts with false, it doesn't matter what happens at the end, it's still true. It's true leading to false. That's the one that's a problem. Okay, so this is false. And then anytime it starts with a false, the statement is still true. Okay, so that's the if Q then P. Now a biconditional says both of these. Remember, it's a two conditional statement. So to write it out the long way would be if P then Q and if Q then P. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and this. Okay, we already did an and way back up here, remember? True and true leads to true. Anything else leads to false. So let's look at this. True and true leads to true. False and true leads to false. True and false leads to false. And then true and true leads to true. So this is the exact same as this. So I'm just going to fill these in real quick. True, false, false, true. But let's talk about how they work. So. If this is the same, it works forward, true to true, true to true, works backwards, this is true. True to false, that's false, the other direction doesn't matter then. False to true is true, but true to false working backwards is false. So basically what happens, if these match up, <clears throat> if they're both true, or in this case both false, excuse me, <clears throat> then our statement here is true. But anytime they don't match up, our statement is false. Okay, that's how a biconditional works. 
right? So anytime they match up, true and true or false and false, statement is true. Anytime they don't match up, you have a false statement. All right? That's the, the main ones I want you to understand. And, or, if, then, if, and only if. And now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to combine these into a longer version of a truth table. Okay, so I have three examples of that. All right, so here's our first one. P and Q, arrow, oh, okay, what does that arrow mean? If, so if P and Q, then not P or Q. All right, so we're going to write all this out. Now, the reason we have blanks is so we can do it just a piece at a time. So I'm going to do P and Q right here. Actually, I'm going to do P and Q right here. This, I'm going to take care of first, this not P. So not P, well, not just says everything's backwards from this. So true becomes false, false becomes true. All right, now let's go ahead and do P and Q. P and Q. Now, if you did P and Q first and then you did not P second, not a big deal. The order you do them in doesn't matter as long as you're able to think through all the different pieces. Okay, remember, we did an and before. True and true is a true statement. True and false is false. False and true is false. And false and false is also false. Okay, now let's look at this one. Not P or Q. Not P or Q. So we're looking at these two kind of things here. True or false. Oh, well, that's true. False or false. That's false. True or true. That's true. False or true. Because of that, it makes it true. Now we're going to do the whole thing. So if P and Q, then not P or Q. Now remember, we're going to start with this one. We're going to work toward this one. Anytime it starts with false, the answer is automatically true. Mm -hmm. So true, true, true. And true to true is also true. So there's our answer. All right. So we're basically ignoring these three when we kind of finish it up. We're going from here to there. True to true, false to false, false to true, false to true. Okay. Now let's look at a longer one. Okay, why is this one longer? Well, first off, it's because I have three letters. Okay, how many you know different rows do I need? Well, there's a very easy formula to figure it out. If you take the number of different letters you're dealing with and take two to that power, that's how many rows you need. So back up here, we had two letters. So two to the second power, two squared is four rows. All right here, two to the third is eight. Two times two times two. Why do I need eight? Well, because I need every single combination of trues and falses. So up here we did true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, we're going to start that, but we're going to extend it a little bit. So instead of doing two trues and two falses, I'm going to do four trues and four falses. Then I'm going to do two trues and two falses, two trues and two falses. Okay, kind of like what we did for the original P and just the P and Q ones. And then finally, R will alternate. True, false, true, false. All the way down. So this is every single co possible combination of trues and falses. All three trues, two trues and a false, two trues and a different false. There's another, um, let me think here, two trues and a different false. One true and two falses, a different one true and two falses, a different one true and two falses, and finally, all false. All right, how do I know how many columns I need? Well, I need as many columns as I have pieces of this. So here's one piece, here's another piece, and then the whole thing I just always put at the end, okay? So here I had one piece, two pieces, three pieces, and then the whole thing. So that's why I had four columns in that case, four extra columns, all right? So let's take a look at this one. So I'm gonna start with if P then Q. All right, so I don't even care about the R in this case. True to true, I know that's true. True to true again, that's true. True to false is false. True to false is false. Anytime it starts with a false, remember for an if-then statement, it's automatically still true. All right, so I have all of that. All right, now let's go if Q then R. Okay, so I'm only looking at these two now. So it starts with true and leads to true, that's still a true statement. True to false, that's the one that's a problem. False, anytime it starts with a false, so these next two are automatically true. 
True to true is true. True to false is false. That's the one that's a problem. And then anytime it starts with a false again, we have an automatically true statement. Now I'm going to write out the whole thing. So if P then Q, and if Q then R. All right, let's see what happens. So I'm going to take this and this. Okay, so true and true, that's a true one. True and false, that's a false one. False and true is false. False and true is false. True and true is true. True and false is false. And true and true. Okay. All right, one more. P, if P then Q, or if Q then P. Okay, so how many sections or rows going across and kind of working down do I need? Well, I only have two letters, so two squared is four. I already have these filled in like we've done in the past. Why do I have three here? One section, two sections, and then the whole thing. So some of them you're going to need more than three. I've seen ones where you need maybe six or seven or even eight. You know, if you have something with P and Q and R, and then there's a not R and a not Q in your problem, and there's an and, and then there's maybe an or, and then there's an if then, and then you got to put it all together. Okay, it's going to take a while to put all that together, so you might need a lot of different columns along the way. All right, this one we need an if P then Q. We also need our if Q then P. Okay, so if P then Q <coughs> starts with a true and leads to a true, that's automatically true. True to false, that's the one that's the problem. And then anytime it starts with a false. Okay, reverse it, true to true is still true. Starts with a false, now we're working backwards, so that's true. Here's the one that's a problem, true leading to false. And false, starting it off, is always true. Okay, now let's write the whole thing. If P then Q, or if Q then P. Okay, so we're going to take these two columns and we're going to combine them with ors. That means just one of them has to be true, remember? It could be both, but just one. So true or true is true, false or true is true, true or false is true, and true or true is true. Now, two of these, you'll notice this one way back here, and this one right here, all the far column, the final answer was trues. Okay, see it there, and you'll see it there. This was not, it was a mixture. Okay, when all of the last column is true, we have a special thing called a tautology. Okay, tautology. Okay, that means that the statement that we are making is always true no matter what. So if P then Q or if Q then P is a true statement no matter what. All right, doesn't matter whether P is true, Q is true, P is true, Q is false, whatever. Any combination of those true and false statements is a true statement at the very end when we have this if then statement combined with an or with this if then statement or the same one that we did uh, at the top of this page. All right, so that's an introduction to truth tables for you. They can get much more complicated. All right, we can do a lot of other connectors that I didn't really talk about, but I want you to understand these basic five things, the not, the and, the or, the if then, and the if and only if. All right, if you want to do this additional project, you need to come get the worksheet from me and then just work on it on your own and get it turned in. All right.